Hi, it's Jan Beta, and today I am going to take another deeper look at my 320k RAM expansion that didn't quite work as expected at the end of the previous video. As you can see, I'm pretty much at the same point I ended the last video on. Uh, I have my 65XE with the memory expansion installed sitting on my bench. I got the Satantronic extended RAM test running. Actually, it passed this time, but if I test this repeatedly, there are faults pop popping up. So the RAM expansion is not quite working as expected. Sometimes it passes all the tests, sometimes it fails some of them. Funnily enough, it now passed the test a second time. Uh, I did never before did I get this result. But uh, yeah, there's still definitely something wrong with this and we are going to try to figure out what it is in this video. Yeah, I tried to run some software and apparently it is still kind of broken or at least flaky. The RAM test passes now for some reason, I don't understand. But uh, for example, this demo I tried to run last time reports a broken RAM bank. Uh, as previously, the one with the built-in RAM test and also uh, some of the games I tried to start last time still don't work correctly, so I suppose we still have a problem here. Okay, let's dig a bit deeper and I want to thank everybody who commented on the video with uh, possible solutions. My initial thought was that these some of these RAM chips were actually bad or that they were too fast and the timings were messed up by that. Uh, these are D41256C-10. The 10 indicates the 100 nanosecond uh, access time of the chips. Usually at that time period, like mid 80s, uh, late 80s, you would have chips with a 15, which uh, means 150 nanoseconds access time. I think this mod is supposed to work with those. It should work with the faster ones, of course, because these should also be able to handle uh, slower access times than they are specified for. But sometimes uh, things get a bit flaky with uh, different sorts of chips. I unfortunately still don't have uh, 150 nanosecond uh, DRAM, but I found this in my parts bin, which is 120 nanosecond variant from Goldstar. So, uh, Maybe we'll try that later. Let me get into the things you pointed out in the comments. Uh, thanks again for that. Uh, Jürgen, who actually invented this mod, this very mod that I did, <laughs> pointed out that you need a specific variant of the logic chip. I used uh, Texas Instruments SN74LS95BN. Jürgen said that you need an N variant, which this technically is. It's a BN, but it's still an N, I suppose. I'm not quite sure what the N actually means, uh, but it should be compatible. This is, by the way, this is a 4-bit uh, shift register. The uh, 74LS95BN variant was also what uh, Mark from the Retro channel used. So he used the exact same chip. Uh, he did a video about this same mod uh, before I did the video and I watched that before and I re-watched it and then we uh, talked a bit on Twitter and he actually used the very same variant of the chip. So that shouldn't be an issue unless this chip is damaged, which could be causing our uh, flaky behavior here. Another thing that got pointed out also by Mark uh, of the Retro channel was that the programming of the gal while I programmed this, I actually um, unticked the little check mark that said uh, lock the chip. But there seems to be another check mark that I overlooked that says encrypt the chip. And uh, Mark said that he had to program his gal a couple of times uh, because he left that uh, checked the encryption. So that might be an issue. It should not technically make a functional difference uh, whether you encrypt the contents of the gal or not, or whether you lock them or not. Uh, 
technically it should behave the same, but uh, he reported he had some issues and had to reprogram the gal. Uh, so I'm going to try that as well. Yeah, and then finally I'm going to recheck all the wiring, looking at the instructions closely and see if I maybe mixed up a wire there or something like that, something very basic. First thing I want to do, because that's the easiest thing, is to uh, check my 74 logic chip here. And for that purpose, I'm using my old Lenovo SL510 uh, notebook that I actually saved from the e-waste at my uh, former employer. And I'm using my TL866 EEPROM programmer, which apparently can also check a lot of 74 logic chips. So uh, you can actually select 74 logic ICs. I can select logic IC and search for 74 LS95. Uh, and we don't have that in the list. <laughs> we don't have the 74 LS95. I mean, that's a chip that's uh, out of production, that's been out of production for quite a while. So no wonder doesn't feature this. In theory, you could test a lot of logic chips with this method, but uh, apparently not this logic chip. I have a couple of those logic chips. I bought like five of them when I got this one, so I'm just going to change it for another one, I guess. Hopefully not all of them are bad if that is causing our issue. While I'm here, I think it's a good idea to also program another gal. Actually got a whole tube of those, so that's six, I think. And I'm going to see if uh, I can just program a new one. These are reprogrammable as well, so uh, no big deal if that programming fails. 16v8d. There we are. Select. And we're opening the file, the JDEC file again. Yeah, there is actually our encryption bit. Let's see if we have our logic table here. Yes. I'm disabling the encryption this time. Maybe that helps. And program. And then there is our lock bit, which I think just prevents the chip from being uh, reprogrammed. So uh, if we remove that, we can reprogram repro it a couple of times. And then we hit program and hope for the best. And that's actually the encryption is what I, I didn't uh, remove that check mark last time. So that might very well be the issue. And yeah, programming was successful. It verified the chip. So maybe that helps. We're going to see. Or maybe the gal was marginal or the programming was marginal. Uh, sometimes with these uh, TL866 programmers, I heard sometimes they have problems with programming gals. But I guess if it verifies I don't see any issues there, really. Maybe the encryption changes the behavior or the timings ever so slightly. I'm not sure what happens there. But worth a shot, I guess. So, first thing I want to try is to replace the logic chip with another one. Yeah, I'm using a fresh one here. These should be new old stock. Let's try if it changes anything. Maybe this changes everything. <laughs> oh no, we got faults. Yeah, we got a lot of faults now. This is kind of the behavior we had in the last video. So like intermittent different positions were reporting errors in the RAM. Yeah, so I suppose it's probably not our logic chip or more of them. I'm going to try another one, I guess. So running this again with another logic chip. Yeah, and it instantly reported stuff as faulty this time. It still might be an issue with the logic chip. Probably not. I tested three different ones now and they were all reporting errors in random positions. Could be that they are all faulty in this batch, but I suppose probably not. So the next step is going to be to go through all the instructions and uh, recheck the wiring. I did that a couple of times actually after uh, I initially wired this in, but yeah, you. Basically, you never know. I was quite tired. It was the end of a long day when I last worked on this. So maybe I overlooked something. I'm not going to bother you with this uh, for long. I'm just going to 
briefly tell you what I'm doing here. I'm just, I have this uh, in continuity mode now and I'm just going in and checking the connections. Uh, so all these pins should be connected together. Should be dead short on pin one and not with any of the other pins. So uh, yeah, that's good actually. We should have a connection to our switch here from this pin nine. There we go. We should have a connection to this pin here. Yes, and we have a 1K resistor between this pin and ground. And that should display around 1K, which it does. 0 0.99. Pin 13 on the gal. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Should be connected to pin 6 on our MMU. We have a clear connection there. Pin 1 on our RAM should be connected to pin 12 on the GAL, which should be this pin, and it should display 33 ohms, which it does, 33.5. Pin 9 is our switch, that goes to a switch, we measured that. Pin 7 and 8, 7 and 8 are connected to our PIA over here. Pin 7 goes to pin 16, so this should go to our, this is the 40 pin chip, so uh, this should be pin 20, 19, 18, 17, 16. That goes to pin 16 and this should go to pin 17, which is the next pin and we shouldn't have any connection between these. We also have a 3.3K resistor between pin 20 and pin 16 on the PIA. Yeah, 3K. Yeah, this it's a 3K resistor, I misspoke there, sorry. So yeah, that's all good, I suppose. That's all the connections. Guess I could redo all these solder joints, but I think I want to try the reprogrammed gal. I guess that might very, very well be the issue, especially since Mark reported uh, similar issues with his gal that he programmed in the encrypted mode at first. So I'm going to remove all these wires from the gal, bend up the pins on the new gal and uh, see if that changes our behavior. I'm going to put some solder on all these pins and uh, wire it up according to the instructions again. So that should be that. Let's double check the connections. Triple check, quadruple check the connections. <laughs> The connections should all be good. Let's retest this thing. It would actually be kind of amazing if it was just the encryption on the gal. As I said in the last video, this uh, extended RAM test only tests the actual extended RAM. The uh, onboard RAM that is originally on here is not tested. We still get an error there and another one and another one. Yeah, so here's what we get. And as you can see, we get a different pattern here. So uh, probably, I guess, my first guess might have been the correct one. Uh, the RAM chips might be a little marginal timing wise because they are too fast and they are reacting in ways that are not uh, usable by the system. So the last option I have with the parts I have at hand is replacing the uh, 100 nanosecond RAM with the 120 nanosecond RAM that I have. I'm just putting in my gold star 120 nanoseconds RAM and replacing all these RAM chips because if the timing is the issue all these RAM chips are going to be marginal. I don't think they are broken or faulty. Might just really be the timings. May of course still be an issue with the logic chip being a wrong variant and uh, not working correctly. But as I said, uh, that same variant was used by the retro channel for his mod. Can be a lot of things. 
So here's our new old stock, different kind of RAM chip, of new old stock RAM chip, uh, 120 nanoseconds access time, made by Goldstar, which, uh, fun fact, now are LG, which you probably know. At least the system still starts up, which is kind of a good sign. 16 banks of extra RAM are still reported. Let's test it. Maybe that really makes a difference, I'm not sure. No. Hmm. Yeah, so that was my best bet. So, uh, it seems the other RAM chips don't make any difference at all. We still get uh, kind of random errors there. Hmm. Yeah, so at least uh, the system seems to fully work uh, with the RAM expansion switched off. So that's a good sign but our memory expansion is still behaving basically the same as before. I'm going to have to look deeper into this again. Okay, I fired up my oscilloscope. Let's take a look at some of those signals on the ICs. So maybe we can see something odd there. And I'm going to do this while the RAM test is running. So this is the signal on one of the RAM chips. And these should just all be connected. These are the new RAM chips here. There's activity on all of the pins as you'd expect. So that's good. Just going through all the pins and see if we get a signal that's uh, not the correct level. This should be around TTL levels, so around 5 volts. And as you can see, yeah, we get around 5 volts. You can see the reading there. That's totally as expected and does look pretty clean. Our logic chip. Uh, you can see kind of a slope there, but that's actually normal for TTL logic. That should not be anything to worry about. That's a bit of an oscillation there and there on the peaks. But also that should still register as a perfectly good signal. That's on our logic chip. Should not be anything to worry about. Our gal. The signal's on the gal and that actually looks pretty clean as well. Yeah, that's super clean. We want to see the level ground and high levels and that's absolutely nothing to worry about at all. Yeah, TTL level signal lo should look something like this. So we have uh, low and high levels changing. And yeah, as I said, a bit of a slope is actually normal. That should be absolutely nothing to worry about. Looking good. It's a couple of days later and I got completely stuck with this troubleshooting. I can't see anything wrong. Sometimes the RAM test passes fine, sometimes it doesn't. So I went on and uh, contacted Jürgen who offered help in a YouTube comment on the last video about this mod. He, he invented the mod in the first place, so he is probably the person who knows the most intricate things about the mod. And he was super helpful and uh, I want to say huge thanks to Jürgen for that. Uh, there is some options that we have that Jürgen pointed out. Actually the RAM on this board, the original RAM, is kind of a mix of different RAM chips. Let me show you. So here's the original RAM chips and yeah, as you can see we have one Sharp RAM chips and the other ones are all MOSTEC. But it seems they are from different batches. I'm not sure why Atari did that, probably they used up st spare parts from their stock. Uh, and it does indeed work fine, but there can be timing issues with uh, using different chips. So I am going to try to replace all of these in the long run, I guess, if I can't get this to work in any other way. It seems like this came from the factory like this and it actually works fine as long as you only use the 64 kilobytes. Might still be an issue with some of the timings because it's different chips and some things might get messed up. Another thing that might be an issue is the processor. Some of these have slightly different timings and it might be 
marginal for this mod. This is a Rockwell made one, made in Mexico. I'm not quite sure if that's the issue because this seems to be working absolutely fine and yeah, I'm not sure, but this is something to keep an eye out for, I guess. However, Jürgen sent me this 3D printed Atari logo, which is going to go into a nice prominent place in the lab. But uh, more importantly for this video, he sent me all the chips he used for his mod. These have been tested for some hours in his Atari 65XE. So he programmed a gal and he sent me one of his logic chips, which is the same BN model that I used, but it might still be that my logic chips are broken. And he sent me a whole uh, batch of 41256 RAMs that he actually tested and they work in his uh, 65XE. So that's my best bet at this, pro at this point. I'm still not sure what causes the faults in my setup here, but at least we can rule out these chips thanks to Jürgen. So uh, thank you very much for that. I'm going to place these in there now and see if that makes this thing work reliably. So I guess the first thing I want to try is actually just replacing the logic chip because that's, as I've said repeatedly, that's the easiest thing to do. So placing this in there, this should be a working logic chip. Okay, we got an error again, so it's probably not the logic chip and I have to replace the gal and the RAM. Still seems to be flaky. So you know what, I'm just going to put the RAM in there as well. So, RAM chips replaced with the ones that Jürgen sent me. It's a mix of NEC and Motorola branded ones, so two different uh, manufacturers of RAM, which should not cause an issue. So I'm just going to start this up again. Let's see if this passes. Nope. <laughs> Pretty much the same behavior as before. So let's desolder the pins on the gal and replace it with the one that Jürgen sent me. This is actually another speed. There's a little number. This is 25 and this is 15. Uh, so I think this is a faster one. I'm not sure if these numbers are the excess time like on the RAM chips. But yeah, this is a different speed of gal chip. There are different speeds of those, but it should not make a difference for this mod because they should all be fast enough for this purpose. And this sits in there nicely. Let's try that again, shall we? No, still the same behavior pretty much. Well, that sucks. Yeah, even with uh, Jürgen's known to be good chips in there, we don't get a working RAM expansion. Still, still the same issue basically with random faults. Uh, I am going to replace all these 4164 RAMs, the original RAM, I think. Uh, going to put sockets in here to be able to re-replace them, them, should that be necessary. I have a bunch of 4164 that I can try, so let's do that. So I'm firing up the desoldering station. Hooray. <laughs> I've added some flux to make it easier to desolder these and I'm going to use my desoldering station and some hot air to get these out. Okay, I removed the solder. I could remove with my desoldering station from this side of the board and I'm going to finish uh, pulling these chips with some hot air, which in my experience works really well. I'm just going to direct some hot air at these pins while pulling the chip up. There we go. That wasn't bad at all. Putting some sockets in in the correct orientation. I guess I'm not going to bore you with me putting more sockets into this board. Just going to fast forward this. Mm. 
got some nice sockets in. Now it's time to clean up and populate these sockets with some other 4164 RAM chips from my parts bin. These are all Sanjo uh, LM3364 15. And again, these tested well with my RAM tester. But yeah, of course, you never know. Got them all in. Let's see if that makes a difference. We still get random faults. Uh. So I guess, yeah, we still get the same behavior. Let's check this again. Like random errors. I went on and replaced all the RAM chips, uh, the original 64 kilobytes of RAM chips again with another batch that I had actually used in a C64 repair previously and that was uh, good in there and we still get the exact same results. So the last thing I can think of at this point is that the processor has marginal timings as Jürgen also pointed out. So I think what I'm going to do is to crack open my Atari 800 XL because that's the only machine I have that has another Sally and uh, try the one from the 800 XL in here. Maybe that works. Maybe I don't know if it's the same version of the chip. Maybe there's a Rockwell chip in there as well. Probably. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that makes a difference. We are going to find out. So we're going to have to take this whole thing out of here because otherwise we won't be able to get the RF shield off because that's screwed in. Yay, there we go. As you can see in this machine, all the ACs are socketed, which will make replacing things much easier. So let's try to use this processor in the 65XE. And if this doesn't work, I don't know what could be the issue, I guess. So this one is from 1983, according to the date code, as opposed to the one from 1987 that was originally in here. So maybe this is better. We're going to find out. Hope this works. Still works, that's good. Okay, <laughs> this is passing uh, some of the ones that it didn't pass. This actually looks pretty promising. I'm not sure. This might just be the issue. Processor that's not quite compatible. Okay, this passed all the RAM tests one time. Maybe it passes every time. Maybe this actually fixed it. That would be kind of amazing and kind of, yeah, of course, the last thing I try. No. No. Pretty much the same behavior as before with the RAM test. Sometimes working and sometimes not working. Uh, bummer. So I went on and did what seemed a logical final, final step. I replaced the GTIA chip, which is actually a CO1488901 in both machines. This is the one that was in here with uh, the one from the 800XL. And I got the RAM test to pass a couple of times now. I power cycled this a couple of times and the RAM test passes. So maybe we just had a broken GTIA chip all along. That would explain a lot. And it also would be kind of amazing if that fixes our issues. Let's run this RAM test again. At this point, I'm prepared for uh, anything. This might work, this might not work. It kind of deserves to work at this point. This is actually literally the, the last thing I thought could cause this. And it's the last uh, socketed chip in here. So maybe somebody worked on this and put a marginal GTIA chip in there. Yeah, look at that. It seems to pass all the tests. Maybe we managed to fix this, finally.
Let's try if our demos work and things like that. Yeah, I think we still have the same result pretty much. Uh, some of these things work, some don't. And we get a green tint uh, with the other GTA 8 chip in there. Okay, this works, it seems. This works. That's better than before. I didn't get this to work before, I think. At least that's something. Maybe we're getting somewhere. This is a 2014 demo called Cyberpunk. And this is now with the new GTA 8 chip and the new processor, which is really an older processor. Okay. This seems to work. We also have sound, but that's uh, turned down a lot. Okay. This seems to totally work, which is nice. So we're making some kind of progress at least. Okay, that's kind of a good sign. This demo at least seems to work fine now. I turned up the volume a bit. <laughs> Just going to try some different things. This is a this was a 320k demo. Yeah. And while the music on this one, I don't know if that's supposed to look like this. This looks good. This is going better than before, at least. Yeah, this doesn't look great. This should look differently, I guess. And now it crashed. Okay, so we still don't have a working memory expansion. Ah, that still doesn't work. I'm not sure what's the matter with this thing. And I'm pretty much out of ideas at this point. Let's try the RAM check again after this uh, ran for a while. If that passes every time, we at least made some progress. Yeah, this at least seems to be better now. I'm not sure why. <laughs> the GTIA made a difference at least. So uh, something with the GTIA. Yeah, we're making some kind of progress. That's good, isn't it? Uh, yeah, so we're still pretty much where we started, except for the RAM test passing each time now. That's, I, th I guess that's a good sign. Probably we need another GTA 8 chip. I'm not sure why that uh, tint, that green tint is uh, with the other GTA A. I suppose there's maybe different versions of that chip, although this has the exact same part number. So maybe the solution to my whole issue here is to get a suitable GTA 8 chip for this machine. It passes the extended RAM test now each time, it seems, which is way better than before. That is quite something. So I guess we kind of fixed it. Yeah, I guess I'll leave this on for a while, while I take a little break and see if the RAM test still passes after a while. Uh, this RAM test passed more often than ever before, actually. So uh, I guess we're getting somewhere. Uh, I'm also going to download new images of the software that I tried to show you and see if that makes a difference. This RAM test actually seems to pass every time now, so I suppose we did something right and the GTA A is an issue actually. So uh, if you have any ideas which GTA A chip I need for this machine or if there's any differences at all, as I've said repeatedly, I'm pretty much a noob when it comes to the Atari, so uh, any input is much appreciated. I think that's at least making it better. So yeah, I'm going to leave this running for a while and see if it still passes the RAM test after heating up. So I left this on for half an hour or so and uh, rebooted and uh, tried the RAM test a couple of times and now it passes the RAM test every time. So that's very promising. So I went back online and downloaded uh, some other versions of things. I'm not quite sure if that's going to make a difference, but we're going to find out. There's our title screen. Space. Oh, and that doesn't look good. <laughs> 
So it's still not quite working as expected. What's the matter with you? This is Commando. This is meant for to be used with 256 kilobytes of RAM. Let's see if that works. Oh, okay, that's, that's pretty promising. That's very promising. That seems to work. No problem. Okay, so it seems our memory is expansion is at least somewhat working. It's working better than before at least, but I'm still not sure what the trouble is. Maybe we need a different version of the GTIA chip. That definitely made things a bit more reliable. Another thing that might potentially be an issue is the Antic chip. This one has a CO21698 dash 01 in here and that's responsible for uh, the graphics for the most part. Uh, it also has direct memory access and controls some of the timings I think. So maybe, just maybe, I'm going to have to source a new one of these too. Especially since the behavior changed so much because I replaced the GTIA chip. Pretty much stuck at this point because I have to source or at least that's my plan. Maybe that fixes the issues here. Going to have to source these two chips at least I guess. CPU probably is fine. These two might be causing the timing issues I suppose that we have here but I won't be able to try that in this video because I have to find a source for these chips. Yeah, uh as I said, I'm a bit out of ideas, but this at least seems to pass the RAM test every time now with the new GTAA or rather the old GTAA from the 800XL in there. And uh, as you can see, some stuff at least works, whereas with the uh, old GTAA, most stuff didn't work. So we, we are getting somewhere. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any more ideas uh, about what could potentially be causing these issues. Uh, as I said, I'm not sure if I should put a more suitable version of the GTA 8 chip in here. Maybe that's an issue. I think I'm going to end this video at this point. I tried a lot of things. Hope this wasn't too boring for you. <laughs> Still, not a perfectly working 320k expansion as I'd hoped. I hope you enjoyed watching this video anyway. Sorry to not have a happy ending for this. At this point, this maybe requires another video. I'm not quite sure. Maybe I'll put this aside for a while and do some more checks on this. I worked a lot on this off camera actually, so there's not everything that I tried in this video. Yeah, that's it for today. Thanks for your support on Patreon and on the channel memberships page and on Ko-fi and on PayPal and also your comments and your thumbs and your subscriptions. Hope to see you again on this channel. I'm Jan Beta. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.